ladies and gentlemen, it has been for fucking life. And I appreciate those of you who came back and stick with me for life. If you know, you know. Because sometimes life doesn't really go the way you plan it. I mean, these breaks that happen, right? Like these, these, these little, I don't like to do seasons. That was never my plan. Um, and I don't plan on doing seasons. I think that as of right now, I can confidently say I, I love, I love you guys. I love the listeners. I love the supporters. I feel like every single time life has forced me to slow down, um, you guys, yes, I get the very, very occasional, yo, where the podcast at? Yo, get back on. That shit was funny. Where you at? Blah, blah, blah. And I know it was never meant in a bad way. I know that you guys say that with something, with, with, with true support and true I miss you energy behind it. And you're never expecting me to just fucking. And, and you know, I, I beat myself up a lot. And I'm trying not to hang on this uh, too long because I do want to have fun. My, you know, the usual bullshit with you guys. Yo, just one time for the one time. Like, hey, hey. Oh my God. But in all seriousness, for this intro, um, what, what, what else can I say? Life beat the absolute living dog shit out of me for the past, I don't know. I, I feel like I was even ghost. Uh, I was even... Just not even really um, living, really, like when I was podcasting before. And that's okay to say. Everything, you know, you know how I am. At the end of the day, like, I'm an open book. And that's part of the reason why you guys fuck with me. And I, and I always encourage everybody to do the same. And I've met a lot of people through this shit. I've met a lot of people who are, who are like me in that, in that regard. Um, a lot of things in my life lately um, have absolutely made me just be in a whole different state. And I talked about quickly about how before this this break, even when I was podcasting, I felt like I was on autopilot. And then my uncle passed. R.I.P. Uh, to my uncle, Louis. Steven Sanchez, that motherfucker was. <sighs> it's so difficult even now for me to talk about it. Um, but I I was supposed to come back sooner. You know what I mean? I was supposed to come back sooner. I was supposed to do episodes sooner. Um, I was really ridding my life of a lot of toxic uh, things that I thought you know, were great in the moment and things that I thought were, um, felt good, felt great. Some of the things in life we feel that are good and great, they're not necessarily good for us long term. We don't understand that, you know, and this is like a fucking stupid thing, but like, and I'm not saying that this was the biggest thing for me, but you know, this is just a little fucking stupid example. Porn on pornography. I said porn on. Hello. Get the fuck out of here. Won't be the fucking last fuck up on this one. Let me tell you, it's been a minute. Um, Pornography. It feels fucking great in the moment. What does it do for you long term, fellas? It fucks you up in so many different ways. Um, So I spent a lot of time ridding a lot of things, a lot of habits that I kept going back to um, to kind of come back from that autopilot feeling that I was feeling. And then my uncle passed and it and uh, th it was like, fuck everything else. Everything else is irrelevant. And it was. And sometimes you need something big like that to kind of really wake you up and shake you and humble you as my uncle would have. He would have definitely in the place I was in before shook me and woke me up and be like, yo, wake the fuck up. He was a fucking animal like that. Like he didn't this nigga did not talk to you in a nice way. I, I'm going to keep it a stack. And I fucking love that dude, despite the way he was. And that's what bothered me the most about it. Um, he passed, and it shook me. It suddenly made all of those things irrelevant. And 
you know, I don't I don't feel like talking about the specifics. There's a lot of fucking weirdos out there. Can I just make a PSA, by the way? Why the fuck do we ever ask people all off the bat how, why, what happened? Like, niggas, somebody lost somebody. Say I'm sorry and move the fuck on. I'll be fine if you don't say I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck. Just do not ask what happened. I don't feel like talking about it. Um, I probably never will. I'm going to have um, my other uncle, his brother on soon, and we're going to have a full blown, you know, a heart to heart and a, and a, and a fun time as usual. But I wanted to dedicate this episode and really just these next few episodes to my uncle Steven, because <sighs> guys, it's so fucking hard to like lose someone tragically unexpectedly you know almost inexplainably even with everything in your face like you just you're just like this has been the longest craziest fucking grieving process in my life and um That's all I got right now. I mean, it's 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 tough to talk about, and uh, I just this ep- episode is dedicated to him and ded- dedicated to anybody um, who I've known. A lot of people recently, unfortunately, who have lost somebody unexpectedly, tragically, inexplainably. Just one of those losses that that really shake you and make you question life as a whole. Um, I wanna I wanna dedicate this episode to him because he would have. My uncle was a very like, yo, get the fuck up and do it kind of guy. And before he passed, I was in that rut. And when he passed, I was more in that rut. But when he passed, I feel like it really shook me and it woke me up as he would have. Um, and that's energy traveling. I know that sounded corny to a lot of you niggas. And it sounded like some fucking, like I'm a fucking bitch who collects crystals uh, for a fucking hobby. Get the fuck out of here. But you know what? Some of these things we believe in. I got a lot going on. I got fucking, I'm I'm developing a fucking uh, lactose intolerant. I'm fucking getting a procedure done on my heart. I am, I am just all, and I might have throat cancer because eating pussy apparently gives you throat cancer. And the world is ending. Uh, My city that I'm from looks like fucking Dune and everything's upside down. So we're going to have fun. We're going to get into it. We're going to dedicate this episode again to my uncle, Louis Steven Sanchez. I love you, bro. And uh, let's fucking get right into it. Welcome to hell. Beep, 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 beep. That meat, my boy. Hey, my child. Your girlfriend call me Kumar. Take it out. Your name's Q. Fucking scumbag. I always thought it was fucking great when Lil Wayne would light the fucking joint and smoke it and sound like this before he starts spitting. Guys, welcome to episode 95 and a half. Yes, it is a very unique number. I've never done it before, but 100, as promised, if you were listening before, is going to be a special episode. I'm bringing niggas back that started it with me and we're going to have fun and they're going to help send me off into this next era of take as needed. Because again, I don't like going on breaks and I don't fucking like being in a rut or a funk, but sometimes you got to go through it to get through it. You got to, you got to go through it to get through it. I mean, what the fuck are we talking about here? This ain't rocket science. So we're here, we're getting through, I don't know if we're all the way through it, but we're getting through it. Um, and yeah, a couple things going on. I mean, as you can see, aesthetically, we are, this is as raw as it fucking gets. Um, but the studio will be back in full force. Um, aesthetically, take as needed, will look absolutely astronomical. 
and it's going to be a great time. I got the wrestling podcast coming back bigger and better than ever. I have something coming with my boy Eric that is movie and food related. I know you niggas love that food and, and, and the movies. And if you don't, then you need to get a fucking life and watch something good because Lord knows you niggas ain't reading books and shit. I can't even tell you to read a book because you don't read books. So you might as well watch the fucking movie because you're retarded like me. Hello. Hello? Get the fuck out of here. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting a lot of things off right now. It's like it's like no more lactose, no more fucking no more porn. And no more eating pussy. The eating pussy gives you fucking throat cancer. I had no idea. We were at. So this is one of the things recently that made me be like, yo, all right, I got, I got to really do the podcast again. Because I hopped on a live. I, I had a little, I had a little fucking moment with, with, you know, had a couple people on there. We were in the car, me and my boy E, after eating pizza Marvin. And we, I don't know why the fuck, this nigga's like me. He's retarded. Like, and when I say that word, don't fucking, you guys know how I am. Welcome back. And if you're new here, Welcome. If you're a bitch, goodbye. Like, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. I really don't. I don't, I don't, I don't know how else to say it. But I am who I am. And you can't take everything so personally. And if you do, this ain't the podcast for you. Get, hit, hit the fucking roll. Go listen to NPR or some shit and get triggered about some shit that doesn't even really affect you. Listen, we're in the fucking car. We just finished some pizza, Marvin. This nigga randomly goes, yo, did you know that eating pussy gives you throat cancer. And I said, get the fuck out of here. I definitely have throat cancer. I'm not bragging. I'm not, don't get turned off. People, men, women, he, they, she, they, whatever. I have, I have eaten a lot of pussy in my life. It's not, and, and, and it doesn't make me a whore or anything. I'm just, this is what bothers me about the whole thing, right? And this is crazy. And this is going to trigger the woman. But I'll still always eat pussy because women are awesome. But I am going to point something out. So take it how you want. But apparently, you do indeed get cancer from eating pussy. Right? We researched this. I don't know where the fuck this kid got this shit from. But he got it. And he brought it to my attention. And like the podcaster, philosopher, fucking explorer that I am, I looked into it. And what we found, and us being movie niggas, we had a, we, we, we pointed out that Val Kilmer had throat cancer, right? Batman, the worst fucking Batman. I'm not even going to lie and say he's one of the best Batman. Oh, man, you know, God help him, whatever. I mean, prayers for the dude, but he's not my favorite Batman. I would pray harder for Christian Bale? Is it fucked up to say you pr you would pray harder for somebody? If it is, I'm sorry. But I'm also not sorry because I would 100% pray harder for Christian Bale. I would. But Val Kilmer, we fucking... There was one of the first articles that popped up was that Val Kilmer could in fact have gotten throat cancer from eating pussy. I'm, and now, don't fucking twist shit and add shit to what I'm saying. I'm just fucking observing, like everybody else, who found out that eating pussy gives you throat cancer. I'm not encouraging anything. I'm not, I'm not uh, setting an agenda. I'm just saying. Because I, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to fucking stop eating pussy. At the end of the day, a lot of things, a lot of things give you the cans. You know what I'm saying? And if eating pussy is one of those ways that you get the cans, then whatever. But I will make one fucking point. Sucking dick doesn't. And 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 sucking dick doesn't. And that's that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I have to say about it, really. I, I, you know, and, and I'm going to leave that open to interpretation. You guys can uh, do whatever you want with it, twist it, fucking pull it, jerk it, whatever the fuck. But apparently, if you suck it, it does not 
give you throat cancer. So, um, yeah, I have been having the worst fucking time with my stomach. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older. I don't know what the fuck the deal is, but your boy cannot handle dairy to save his fucking life. More in particular, ice cream. But if it is dairy, I'm not mad because a nigga could go get like a nigga could still go get like White Castle or fucking New York system down the street. You know what I fucking yo, you know what I tell you know what I tell niggas? And 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 if you're a real food, a real, real foodie, like like you didn't just start a page yesterday, you know, you don't necessarily have to have an IG page. If you're a real deal foodie, like it's in your heart, fuck social media, fuck all of that, you, then you absolutely know for sure, for certain, that the equivalent to White Castle, which is an amazing two o'clock in the morning fucking drive or, or, or stumble in or whatever in New York, a meal at two in the morning, fucking lit out of your mind. Blasted beyond belief. Waltz right in there. Get a fucking crave box. Kill them shits. The equivalent to that magic at two in the morning in the state of Rhode Island is Onlyville, New York system. And I say that with a burning passion because I am a foodie. And the only thing that equals to fucking getting a Crave box from White Castle at one in the morning in Rhode Island is only the New York system. And it's the same level of magic and the same level of absolute fucking bottom, like low class fucking food, low class fast food, low, low class everything. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not sitting here telling you that White Castle is great. But I am telling you that White Castle is great. You understand? You get what I'm saying? White Castle is amazing. It tastes amazing. It looks okay. It looks like something ratchet, but it tastes amazing. It tastes fucking great. I don't understand it. I can't explain it, but especially when you're lit, the greatest thing you'll ever eat, right? These little sliders, you fucking knock them back, knock them back, knock them back. Next thing you know, you killed the whole Crave box. Like you were fucking, what's the dude's name who kills all the glizzies every year? Fucking Chestnut. Hey, yo. Get the fuck out of here. What the fuck? I'm blasted. And it's been a long time, and so far it has been real. I love you guys. I really... I really appreciate it. I don't even know what the fuck I was talking about. The fucking... Yeah, there we go. On one end, you got brief little I love you guys session and then right back into the... You know, you get you get what I'm saying? I'm back. I'm fucking back. Hey. Um, Rhode Islanders, if you haven't had White Castle, it's... Especially at one in the morning, the same way you'd go get those fucking wieners all the way. Pause. Go to the fucking Bronx. Go to Hackensack if you go to Jersey. Go to go somewhere downtown where they have the ones where you walk in. I feel like the drive through ones in the Bronx or in Jersey are a little more my style because I'm a Heights baby. I'm an uptown boy. Um, you go get that shit at one in the morning. It's the exact same thing as... The motherfuckers, that fucking White Castle in the Bronx at one in the morning with the rats running around and these little fucking ratchet looking sliders, equivalent to the fucking all the way wieners that the nigga is stacking on his arm. On his arm. You understand what's happening right now? This is a 1 a.m. spiritual experience. And it's not because of the fucking bud. It's not because of the fucking hash. It's not because of the, 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 the tequila that you're sipping on from a fucking Darth Vader cu uh, mug. And it is not 
from any other drugs that you guys do, respectfully, I don't care, you know, f- whatever. It is, if you did it sober at one in the morning, it will still be a magical experience. They're just both the nastiest, most absolute, probably things that you put in your body that would take years off your life guaranteed. But circle back with me now. Fuck all of that. In the moment, it is pure bliss. That's all I'm going to say. And the reason why I went down that rabbit hole is because I'm thinking to myself, yo, if I can't have dairy, especially at night, because the next morning I'm going to be fucking having the runs until I have a fucking hemorrhoid on my ass. That's what dairy does to me now. That's what dairy does to me now. Why the fuck would I want to go to Ben and Jerry's, bitch? Oh, let's go on a fucking ice cream day. Let's go to fuck. Bitch, I'm 29. Don't you know that my body's falling apart? Don't you know that I got fucking slip vertebrae in my back that I'm going to physical therapy for? Don't you know that I got a fucking irregular heart rhythm that I got to, you know, uh, have them go in through a artery in my groin to go ahead and burn whatever cells are sending bad signals to make my heart beat like that. And on top of all of that, don't you know that I, uh, I can't fucking tolerate ice cream. Don't even try it. Don't even fucking try it. But you know what I will do at one in the morning? I will 120% have three all the way, a fucking order of fries with some cheese on that bitch, and a coffee milk. And... Depending on how I'm feeling, it won't be to go. It'll be in-house. In-house so I can hear these niggas. Them niggas are always arguing with each other. Always. It's great. It feels like a bit every time you're in there, but it, but it's real. Like, they're really, they really go at it. Them niggas is really old, miserable brothers that just fucking... Their, their only last joys in life are to argue with each other about everything and nothing at one in the morning while they're stacking fucking wieners with with Hamburg and onions and mustard, and it's the nastiest shit. But you know what? Same shit at White Castle. Oh, man. Um, I had the craziest breakthrough with my therapist recently. And, uh... You know, you you really realize, like, sometimes you're your worst enemy. You are your worst enemy. You know, if you think about it, you know, depression, suicide rates, all of that, that literally all stems from people who are their worst own enemies. And I'm just so glad that, like, I had that breakthrough because... I can, I don't feel like I'm an autopilot anymore. I don't feel like, like I'm living, but not living. You know what I mean? And one second, a little bit of tequila to loosen the lips a little bit from fucking pause my lips. Um, Darth Vader mug, good old Darth. I'm bald like Darth now. You guys see this shit? I'm I'm like a fucking uh I feel like I'm more of a villain. I feel villainous. I wanna tap my head. I wanna get that real cholo look. Um But one of the things that I had a breakthrough about really, and this is this goes out to all my parents who listen. I, I have a lot of parents I know for sure who listen, um, people my age who listen, so some parents in there and I went through the thing that I, that was really weighing heavy on me, especially after losing my uncle was just this, this question of like, Jesus Christ. Cause my uncle was unhappy, you know? And, uh, just, just, That was a reminder on top of what I had already been struggling with, which was this idea that 
my family is cursed with this chemical imbalance, this, this, you know, these issues that we have, whether it be panic attacks, depression, both. Um, and, you know, before he died, I beat myself up with this and, and now still do have been a lot better with it. Um, just feeling, you know, like, like I'm, I, I pass it down, like, fuck, this curse runs through my family and I have it and I'm, I'm over here creating new life and loving new life and raising new life, but not realizing like I'm passing this down to them. I see, um, signs in my daughter definitely of, of, you know, anxieties and all these other, you know, she, she doesn't, she doesn't quite know how to grasp and handle them well. And it feels like intense emotions and it feels like, you know, early signs of anxiety. And, and like, I'm really glad I had the breakthrough because I, you know, looking at it, it's like I either had those thoughts and, and, and started diving down rabbit holes about my family that really are, are just kind of ignorant and, and um narrow minded. But, I either do that, dive down rabbit holes with ignorant thoughts and, and that don't help me at all, or I acknowledge that, you know, or, or I tuck them away like they don't exist. And you can't do either, you know, and I had this breakthrough of like, yo, you have to see that these thoughts, w w for whatever the case may be, whether you're a parent, whether you're going through some, sh some shit, and you have these thoughts that come and make you go down these dangerous holes that eventually make you, you know, resent your own life. Um, the key is really seeing these thoughts and you do this with anything, really. You, 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 the thought comes to your head, you acknowledge that it's there and, and you understand why you're having them, but you also shrug them off and say that it doesn't, it's not necessarily true. Um, and I'm, and, and, and I'm glad, and I hope that, and, and usually I share these situations with you guys because I hope that it can help somebody who's going through the same shit or has been through the same shit or will go through the same shit because that's how life works. It's just constant needing to go through shit to get through shit. So... I've been at the gym. I'm over here talking about fucking uh, wieners and fucking crave boxes at 2 a.m., 1 a.m., whatever the fuck it was. But realistically, I'm a fat boy at heart. OK, so but I have been back at the gym. Um, I really. Yo. First of all, hold up, hold up. I just had a thought. I've been watching Succession. I know. Get the fuck out I'm of here. fucking late to the party. I understand that. I understand that. But hear me out. When people broke this show down to me, they broke it down the way the show is, right? And I, I'll tell you how I break it down, and, and it has gotten one or two people to watch it. My whole family is watching it now. People broke when people broke it down to me, they broke down to me what what the plot of the show is. Right. They left out, you know, they just said, oh, this is the plot. This is this is great. And I would sit there like it just doesn't sound interesting. I watch it. And yes, the plot is this fucking absolutely filthy loaded family. So loaded, they have ties to the fucking president through the father, the 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 owner of the whole shit, right? The dude's turning 80. He is obviously with the age, you know, they get sick, they get senile, whatever. All the kids are pretty much all plotting on who is going to be next in line. And it's absolutely bananas. But what they didn't fucking mention, which I mentioned to people now, is this show, right? Uh, this is how I feel about this show right now. And I'm on season two for those. I'm late to the party. I know I'm a film head. I'm a show head. 
I watch everything that is fucking quality and I rave and I'm an influencer because that's how fucking into this shit I'm in, I, I, I am into. And I'm lit. Holy fuck. Hello? Get the fuck out of here. Um, this show I'm convinced could be about shit and piss flowing in water. And if the writers and directors of Succession wrote and directed that show about the shit and piss floating in the water, it'd be a fucking 10 star show. Succession is literally all writing. Nothing fucking crazy shit happens, right? But it's not like Game of Thrones, this dude's fucking his sister, and then he fucking beheads the cousin because the cousin was fucking the sister, and there's fucking dragons, and and all over the... No, Succession is not like that. Succession is crazy with family drama and and some twists and turns and some moves and things that make you think of what these billionaires do in real life. But it's how it's written. This show is fucking amazing. And, and the fucking music is great. <laughs> Y'all niggas know how I am. I'm low key, like on the spectrum because if music and movies and shows are fire, I will listen to it. I, I don't give a fuck. I don't care how fucking weird that sounds. I play the Interstellar album in the sauna. And I and because that's on and I am at peace, I can be in that sauna fucking dripping and heating up for 30 minutes straight. I'm not fucking kidding. Yo, bro. Any fucking scenes, my mood lately, because I've been doing so much and going to the gym and fucking just doing things that have made me feel great mentally and physically and emotionally. Every single time I'm just like walking or, or driving or fucking in the gym, I feel like Kendall. And I feel like Kendall when he's walking down the street and you just start hearing this shit. Kendall with the glasses on. The other day I fucking... Yo, bro. I'm, I'm walking through my day the other day real quick. All right? Talk to Frank from Collaborative Club. Studios back open. He'd rather have me in there than anybody else. All the drama's out the door. There was drama in there. That's why I left. I'll keep it a stack. There was some, you know... Just fucking stupid little kid shit that was tearing the whole place down and I was like I want no parts and I fucking came out and I got discouraged and now I'm back all right so listen talk to Frank back in the studio talk to the boys this was all in the same day I was all fucking business that day I was all I was all fucking bro and the way the music is playing that's literally like every waking moment I was fucking the music was intensifying and the intro was about to come on. And this is when Kendall and the show is making moves. I was all fucking business that day. I hit up Frank. I talked to Frank. We fucking studios coming back bigger and better. Um, talk to the boys. Talk to the wrestling niggas. Talk to the fucking movie nigga. Got a whole bunch of niggas. You know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> Running deep out here. Deep. Deep water, nigga. Sup? Take that shit how you want it. Dirty ass niggas. Um, bro. I hit up the boys. We 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 all figured something out. We're all locked in. Literally, that whole fucking rest of the day, I was like, on my way to my fucking daughter's graduation from kindergarten this week. Yo, bro, hold up. You know what's the fucking... I just love Kendall, bro. Like, I don't know. Like, that nigga just... He, he obviously, like, it's same thing with the Sopranos. I related to Chris. Kendall's a fucking... He's an animal, but he he fuck, he fuck gets fucked up. He gets 
he he go he he goes through a lot of shit in the show from from what I'm seeing so far with his dad and some issues with you know the kids, but mostly trauma that comes from you know his relationship with his pops, and the nigga is fucked up. He gets fucked up in the show. He's like he's he's sober in the beginning, and then he just ends up getting fucked up. Bro, when I leave the gym after a successful fucking push day and I get in my car and before I fucking throw the fucking cinnamon toast crunch protein shake back, which is phenomenal choice, Jimbo at Vitamin Shop. Come on, bro. I got great taste. Before I even throw that protein shake back, I'm fucking taking a dab out the proxy. Dog. That's the mood. Just straight up pull out the fucking parking lot. About to do a cut high. My life is succession. My life is Kendall Roy. When I'm all business, when I'm fucking all business and lit at the same time, when I'm all business and lit at the same time, bro, I am Kendall Roy. I am fucking Kendall Roy and my life is succession. How you fucking doing? Get the fuck out of here. I love it. I love watching movies and shows and getting so into it that it becomes my life. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. I don't mean that, but it's relatable shit. Niggas know what I'm talking about. Um, mm, mm. This tequila is going down very, very, very nicely. But yeah, bro, I've been going to the gym, nigga, and like, yo. I completely it's been it's been so long so long since I've been to the gym and I did a little fucking bit about this at, at on this podcast a long time ago when I was on my fish shit and super skinny that was like keto Jimmy that was like I'll never go back to him like I'm still gonna eat my food bro I'm gonna do it in a in a very because I'm cutting out all the bad shit bro I even cut off porn like let's talk about that real quick you niggas need to stop watching porn for real like it really fucks it really fucks with you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I don't even I don't even classify like as someone who was porn addicted. I I would probably watch it like two or three times a week. And even then I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Like this this ain't it. Cut. I just literally cut, and that doesn't even sound like a big deal to some of you. Some of you are probably like, yo, fuck it, I beat my shit seven times a day, I'm an animal. Hey, I could be an animal too, very, very easily. But my thing is, like, if it, I'm on some shit lately where it's like, if it's not making me happy and productive at the same time, what's it for? Porn makes me happy. Yes, I can whack my shit and fucking be absolutely happy. But what am I really gaining from it? Nothing. I did the same shit with everything else. People. Fucking. Relationships with people. Habits, everything, everything that was I was just like, bro, it's just not that's it. We're 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 trimming the fat. We are trimming the fat. We have trimmed a lot of the fat and we like how we're feeling and we're feeling like fucking Kendall Roy right in the subway. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think Kendall Roy rides the subway in the fucking show because them niggas is filthy rich, but I'm like a fucking low class, mid class Kendall Roy right now. That's how I'm feeling. Bro, I've been going to the gym and I had I talked about this before and like, yo, I completely forgot that there's really old heads, old white heads to be specific, walking around with their fucking dick swinging all over the place. What the fuck? I go in the sauna the other day. The the sign out outside the sauna is is like, oh, remember not to wear shoes in the sauna, bro. You're worried about niggas going in there with shoes, but you're not talking to fucking uh, Tony over there with his balls on the fucking seat, raw dog in the seat on the sauna. These niggas get in the sauna with nothing on. 
Yo, the craziest shit about me with these old white niggas in the gym that be butt ass naked, bro. They put on, they like barely put on a towel. Okay, they put on a towel like this. Ready? This is how they put the fucking towel on. They go. They don't even fucking try. All right, that that is literally how it happens. These niggas will literally. This is how they put their towel. The, the fucking naked niggas, you know how you see them with like the towel half off or completely off? It's because this is what they did with the towel. They barely tried. Ready? No fucking, no effort at all whatsoever. They're just like, you know what? I'm a fake put it on because I want my shit to be swinging. Because old niggas don't care. That's what it is. I realized it. I don't see people of color. Oh, hello. I forgot. I got the eat more ass pillow. If eating pussy gets you throat cancer, I could only imagine what eating ass does. Um, what was I saying? This is why you can't get too blasted, but it was just one of those episodes, fellas. It's a ninety. It's a ninety nine and a half. Okay, give me a break. They these old niggas just don't care. They don't give a fuck. And the craziest thing is, like, you don't see the old men of color do it. And I don't know what it is. I mean, yo, the old white niggas, the old, like, I'm assuming in Rhode Island, like, Portuguese, Italian, a lot of Italians who do it. And I know because of their tans. They're very orange, and that's what Italian niggas do, and I don't know why. Even though older women do it. They look like fucking Dune. Bro. My city was fucking, yo, I'm going to get into that. I'm going I'm to I'm finish, finish the roast of the fucking old saggy niggas balls on the fucking, on the fucking sauna, the wooden seat in the sauna first. Because that's crazy. They don't care. And this is, what, this is what my thought process with that is. Them niggas is still going. Like, they, they are bored at that point. And I'm not gonna lie, bro. I think it's it's like a it's like a confidence booster. Like they're like, yo, you know what? I'm gonna let my shit swing in the locker room, and I'm gonna let these dudes look at me and be like, yo, what the fuck? And get uncomfortable, and it's gonna fuel me. And then I'm gonna go out into the gym and fucking be so far up a bitch's ass, fucking twenty two year old girl's ass that I wanna that I'm that I'm smelling her fucking pH levels. That's what I think goes through the mind of these men. Bro, speaking of old Italian niggas, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino are out of their fucking minds. But I understand. But I understand. Last time I was on the show, I was talking about vasectomies and all that other shit. Will I ever get one? Probably not realistically if I'm keeping it a stack. So if we're talking about I'm 29 and I'm two kids deep, where the fuck will I be when I'm their age? Fucking 60, 70. Let me look these niggas ages up real quick. Bro, they're both just like still nutting in bitches. Both of them literally just recently got, got women pregnant. Or had no, not got women pregnant. They've been did that. They had a fucking kid, Robert De Niro. Here we go. This nigga is 79 years old, bro. 79. And had a fucking baby one month ago, okay? Seven children. You know he's not using no fucking shit that rich people can buy where 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 you could they, there's probably something that you could pay for that's what somebody's going to tell me in the comments oh you could pay for something whatever no robert de niro and al pacino are some old horny dogs that are still getting it in getting it in Hello? get the fuck out of here jesus rust shaking it off robert de niro and al pacino are two old dirty dogs that are continuing to get it in. And honestly, I understand. <laughs> Let me see what 
Let me see what time Al Pacino's on. He just had twins. He just had twins. And he is fucking 83 years old and he just had twins. How many kids does he have? Al Pacino children. Nope, not cruising. Children. This man has three kids. Okay. Maybe that'd be me. I don't know. I need a break from the kid thing definitely right now, but I'm more, I think, realistically, if I'm being, like, truthful about it for real, I would say I'm probably going to end up being, like, a Robert De Niro. That nigga's crazy. Seven kids is crazy, but I honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I ha- I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I'm Dominican, so I do, but I don't. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. <laughs> oh, fuck. Y'all know damn well I've been losing my fucking mind about, like, how New York was looking last week. This shit was looking like Arrakis. The fucking desert planet in Dune. Straight up. My boy Eric sent me a video of somebody in New York busting out the fucking speaker and playing that incredible music that plays when they're on Arrakis and Dune. And I was like, yo, this is so fucking horrifying, but it is also hilarious. The world's ending. I'm on some shit now. It's so crazy to me that, like, when I was... When I was, like, 16, 17, I used to lose my fucking mind about... Like, I'm, I'm not really losing my mind now. I go down rabbit holes, and I'm like, yo, there's nothing we could do. When I was younger, it was like, this cannot happen. What can we do? Like, those are questions that would pop in my head when I would read shits about fucking things about climate change and, like, the possibility of an outbreak and all this other shit. Bro, what can we do? Nothing. We can't do shit. It's going to happen. What's going to happen will happen. But I'm just sitting at this point. I'm sitting here like, yo, which apocalypse is it going to be? That ass. That's how wild shit is now that I'm ser- seriously sitting here and I'm like, yo, which apocalypse is it going to be? Is it going to be some biblical shit where there's fucking demons coming out of nowhere and fucking People get zapped up into heaven and and some people get left behind and like. Or is it going to be an alien invasion or is it going to be a a, a natural disaster, a, a, a natural disaster movie? The possibilities are endless. And you know what, bro? Honestly, at this point, the possibilities are endless and, and, and that's where we're headed. I'm going to just. Keep popping them motherfuckers out like Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. That's that's the solution. That is the solution. When you guys last saw last spoke to me, I was talking about getting a vasectomy to not fucking knock bitches up. And you know what? Now I'm saying I'm encouraging. I'm personally not gonna do it. Um personally. I'm just saying it's not a bad idea to knock bitches up because guess what? The world's ending. Populate the earth. Um you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, right? And when this apocalypse goes down, motherfuckers is gonna die, but there are motherfuckers who are going to live. So what I'm saying is, you motherfuckers need to create more motherfuckers to have more possibilities of your own motherfuckers staying alive. And I think I think that might be it. Because I think at this point, I'm, I'm fucking losing my mind. These are officially crackhead hours. And uh, I really fucking appreciate the shit out of you guys. I appreciate you listening to my rambling and my venting. And all this it's other the shit outro. Said I'm out here. And now we out this bitch.
I'll catch you guys next week. I got something very special coming. Out here. And it's going to be great. It's Jimmy's Diner. It's Jimmy's Diner.